Gaming nowadays just sucks. You know, when you think about all these technological advancements we had, you'd think there'd be, you know, awesome games, you know, coming out. You know, great, fantastic, complete games, you know, on release day that are just, you know, don't need any patches, don't need any of that, don't need any fixing afterwards. But unfortunately, but unfortunately, it's not the case. Cyberpunk 2077 is a fucking joke. I feel really bad for the people that were excited for this game because it's just like it's just another example another game that gets really hyped gets announced too early gets delayed so many times and it just turns out to be a complete disaster this fucking game needed more time in the oven and to just get all these damn bugs and glitches out of the game there's no reason nowadays where we should be having this problem still it's ridiculous we've been through so many failures that are similar to cyberpunk and now it's just out of all ballooned up to this one game where it's just all these all these glitches and bugs are just unacceptable and this is coming from a young developer like city project red you know a developer that a lot of people respect a lot of people really like and you know trusted with this game and you know almost rightfully so because a lot of people really enjoyed witcher 3 so you would think that since all this marketing was going into it, all this effort was going into, you know, Cyberpunk, they showed it off with gameplay and everything. You know, it looked good. You know, it looked good. It seemed good up front. But then the actual reality is that it's not. It's buggy. It's glitchy. You have bugs where people are getting flown across the map just by climbing into windows. You have uh, other bugs where cars are randomly exploding. It's the dumbest shit ever, man. With that, it really has to do with, you know, this whole being able to ship a game out and then fix it. It's like developers and publishers and the higher ups, they realize that you don't actually have to finish your game when you ship the game. You can just quote unquote complete the game and then when you ship it, then you can complete the game. Because with this game especially they probably saw that it had you know a bunch of pre-orders already people are ready to buy it reviews hadn't came out all of that so they just shit the game out and let it rip and this is what you get you get an incomplete game that's probably going to be actually finished in probably the next six to nine months who knows how long it's going to take and you just get a buggy mess like this and this is the problem with modern gaming it's like developers have these i guess you could say fail safes in patches to just you know push out fucking games non-stop and just fix them later like, it's garbage this is never how it was in the past these higher ups that demanded the game come out so quickly are like hey we already have their money from the pre-orders the insane amount of pre-orders so why not just shit the game out now perfect for the christmas season so they'll all buy it and we don't have to actually finish the game we don't have to actually complete the game we can just shit it out and finish it afterwards we don't have to complete so essentially what they're saying is that we don't have to complete the game now we can complete the game later like <laughs> it's insane and for me it was very suspect because you know you delay it once okay delay it a second time and i'm worried and then delay it another time after you say that the game went gold why is that happening now that brings into question of what the hell going gold even means anymore now we have to look at an article that says x game goes gold and be like did it actually go gold or are they just saying that like it's fucking insane the the state of the industry right now it's crazy i heard the game is better on pc but granted most people probably got this on console so that's why there's such a huge backlash and it doesn't even matter what system it's on. Every system should be the exact same in terms of bugginess, glitchiness, and everything. There shouldn't be just a superior version when it comes to that aspect. I can understand graphics, but bugs and glitches? Why is that happening? And how long have they been working on this game? Like six years? It's insane, man. It's... God, man, it's it's really sad when a respected developer like CD Projekt Red makes a game like this. If you can't even trust them, who the hell can you trust? But $70 games though, right? $70 games for day one patches and patches and patches. And 
and patch on patch on patch for the next six to nine months actually finishing said $70 game when before you bought a PS2 game that was $50 and it was complete on the disc no problems no major bugs or glitches absolutely crazy it was so bad on consoles to the point where people were refunding of course like they should because this is complete bullshit to have a game come out like this in this state so rightfully so they'll you know, refund the game and you know what Sony did Sony fucking pulled the damn game off the off the PlayStation Store entirely finally Sony doing something good for once in their fucking lives it, <laughs> this doesn't redeem them in any sort of way for me but that <laughs> at least you're doing something good I mean it seems every day we're finding out something new about what the heck is going on with this game and even just recently it just came out about how the developers are having internal strife with each other and how even the developers themselves didn't want this game to come out and that due to this game being such a disaster on launch they've lost a ton of money so what I'm hoping for out of this is just that that loss sends them a huge message in never doing this again with any of the future games they make because this game coming out the way it did is just very damaging to the overall company. And it is good to see that there are developers inside the company that don't agree with what the higher ups did in trying to push the game out so soon. It's disrespectful to the medium, it's disrespectful to everybody that was hyped for it. It, it just shows the lack of care that whoever decided to make the decision to push this game out has for gaming. That's what it is. These corporate assholes, they don't care about gaming. They don't care about this game, you know, being a good product that people can actually play and experience and, you know, it being a complete game. They could care less about that. All they care about is getting the max amount of sales at the perfect time. And that's it. Quality of the game, be damned. And they need to be held responsible most of all. God, can we just, can we have a game come out? And just be good for once? Is it so much? Is it so hard to ask? Like, really? I mean, a big budget one. Because, of course, indies most of the time are you know pretty damn good. I'm playing a bunch of them right now. They're fucking amazing. But these triple A fucking companies, man, it's insane. They just can't get it right, man. If it's not one thing, that's another. If it's not one person pushing it out, it's another. It's insane. It's crazy, man. God, I keep saying this over and over again, but this should not be happening. It, sh it really should. This has to stop, man. It really does. I I'd imagine this would be the last straw for a lot of people. I'd hope to, to learn not to get so caught up in the advertising and the promises and all that. And just look at things objectively. Maybe don't pre-order as well, because that, I feel, I feel like just the, the pre-orders in general just send a really bad message for you know developers and publishers to just you know shit these games out because we already have their money and who cares about the quality of the game after that uh, we just fix it later like I said with patches it's unacceptable this <laughs> we need to uphold quality we need to uphold the standard or else shit is gonna get worse and worse if you guys keep letting shit slide shit's just gonna keep sliding down down and further down down the rabbit hole of mediocrity the crazy part is I'm not even done talking about gaming news right now because there's even more stuff to talk about I'm gonna make this really quick cuz uh, this is obviously bullshit last of us 2 wins game of the year and uh, I gotta give it to last of us 2 because uh, I gotta say this is probably the most predictable game ever. <laughs> like, just based off the initial trailers and everything, I visualized all of this happening. All of it. Of course, you know, to, it have, <laughs> reality was a much worse degree, but I kind of knew that, you know, since it had all that weirdo stuff in it, of course, it got Game of the Year. Because, of course... Like for in terms of game of the year, who would have won? Who I would have you know wanted to win? To be honest, I would have liked anything else other than Last of Us Two to win because 
you know, last year they chose Sekiro, and that was pretty much the one game that absolutely nobody would be would have a problem with winning. But this year they chose the game that everybody would have a problem with. And that's another thing. It's like these game awards should be purely voted on by the actual people that play the fucking games. Not a bunch of people from the whack ass media. No, the people that actually pay and play these fucking games. Of course, when they have you know, an actual poll to pick who gets game of the year. Of course, it's not Last of Us 2. Hell fucking no. It was uh, Ghost of Tsushima. And like I said, I don't really care. Because <laughs> I would have been satisfied if it was anybody, anything else other than that. But, yeah. But, that's pretty much all I gotta say on that. Of course, it's bullshit, but predictable. So, Nintendo's been in a lot of heat recently. Especially because, you know, all these things that they've done. First off, there is the closing of a Smash Brothers tournament called the Big House. This is a tournament they do every year. I used to watch it every year when I was still heavily into competitive Smash. The thing about this one, though, is that they couldn't do it, you know, in person, so they had to do it online. So, to do it online, they had to use this emulation. It was called Slippy. And the thing that Slippy is, is that... It's actually really good at emulating Melee and letting you play online in a very fast way, almost like you're playing in person. Of course, not perfect, but it must be good enough to actually have it for a tournament like this, a huge tournament. Because these tournaments in particular always have like hundreds and hundreds of people. So everything was running fine. You know, they're about to have the tournament. It was coming up and Nintendo comes in with a cease and desist order. This is just one of those big problems with Nintendo. It's been a very long running thing. You know, other than this, like you have all these fan games, right? You know, prime example for me would be AM2R. Game gets released and then gets a cease and desist order. And pretty much the only way you can find that game is just by, you know, searching around as long as you can search around. Fantastic game, by the way. But that's the thing. With fan games, they always shut them down. Like there was a multiplayer, uh, Super Mario 64. They did the 2D Mario Battle Royale before Nintendo even did it, and they shut down that. Nintendo's was really bad with handling fans in this sort of way. And of course, after this got canceled, there's a lot of backlash from the people that were looking forward to that event, looking forward to do it, because we're living in you know these times where we can't do it in person, so you literally can't do it in person, so how do you expect us to do the tournament? You just, it, it, to me, it just seems like, do you not want us to do the tournament? Like, it, just in general? Like, because it's the only way for them to do the tournament. So it's like, now you're just getting rid of, you know, any sort of fun that they could possibly have whatsoever in a tournament setting. It's just really bad. And then this leads over into, you know, the whole movement of Free Melee. Hashtag Free Melee has started trending on Twitter. And it's just this huge fan backlash towards Nintendo and just trying to get them to change their ways for once like because this is like i said this has been a long-running thing over these past almost well, this past decade really them constantly shutting out fan-made games and is it in the right to do it yeah they have the right to protect their ip but it's just is it the right thing to do because you know like i said with these t with this tournament there's no other way they could do it so why would you want to ruin that one event just because you don't want them playing an emulator it's just like I said <laughs> Nintendo is really frustrating sometimes but this has led over into uh, a whole fan movement with uh, hashtag free melee that was trending on Twitter about people you know expressing their distaste for this and just trying to get Nintendo to really change their ways because like I said this has been a long running thing with them another tournament was actually supposed to happen this was a Nintendo hosted event it was a Splatoon 2 tournament and the thing about this one is that, you know, they were all set and ready to go, but the day before they canceled it and they said they had, you know, some uh, unexpected difficulties or something like that. And then rumors started, you know, coming up about how apparently people were entering in the tournament under names that were supporting the free melee movement. And so Nintendo decided to cancel it. That's what people are saying that that's why they, you know, closed the event. And if that is truly the case, that is completely awful too because they it's, it's almost like they really want to bury this game and i feel like that's not what it is but it's just man at this point 
to me, it seems like they're looking at all these situations just from a base level. And let me just get into it. the last case. A YouTuber by the name of Etika, he passed away, unfortunately, last year. And people were selling these covered Joy-Cons for charity. You know, it was a very positive movement. You know, they were just selling Joy-Con covers. And again, Nintendo comes in and shuts them down as well. And now they can't sell the Joy-Cons anymore. And it's just, it's just like, to me... For all these situations, it just seems like Nintendo's just looking at this base level of, okay, they're doing that thing, so let's shut them down just for doing that one thing. But when they're not seeing why they're doing, you know, that one thing as a whole, you know, get, they're not getting the whole perspective of why they're doing that. They're using Slippy for the tournament so people can come together and play. They're making these joy cons for charity splatoon 2 is kind of a weird case because you know they're supporting a movement i still don't think that they should you know i still i still don't think that you should cancel the whole tournament just because they're doing that let people name whatever they want as long as it's not inappropriate this is just nintendo and at most all we can do is talk about it and just keep reaching out to nintendo about how this is wrong this is not a good look and especially you know and not a good look for you know yourself or your fans that you know love you it's like we want to play your games we want to like you but it's just you keep doing things to make us not like you so so best case scenario is that nintendo apologizes maybe lets the event go or uh, they let them resell the, you know they let them keep selling the joy cons they you know bring back on the splatoon 2 tournament because that's really the only way they're gonna, you know, come out positively like this because, you know, coming out with, you know, soulless PR statements about how, oh, they were using emulation, so we had to take it down. Like, PR like that is not gonna work. Morally, wasn't right, especially considering the impact this has had on your fans. Nintendo's had problems like this in the past, but they're all like separate cases. For this, was very much in quick succession. There was a lot of things going on you know, nearly at the same time, especially over this last half of the year. So overall right now, it's just best thing Nintendo can do is apologize and let these events go. Just let the fans do what they want to do. They're, they're not hurting you in any way. Again, for Melee, it's like you guys aren't even selling the damn game. <laughs> so it's like, why do you want to shut it down? Like you're, it's not like you're going to make money from it. Unless you guys are working on Melee HD. And that's another thing. It's like this Slippy emulator apparently has, you know, way better online than their Nintendo Switch online, which I just think is really funny because, of course, I've been a very big advocate for uh, not supporting Switch online. But that that's that to me, that's that's freaking hilarious. Uh, great on the community for that one. Um, although it's not, although frankly, it's not really that hard to to be better than Nintendo Switch Online. For the Joy Cons, it's just a it's just a Joy Con cover. The reason why they took that one down was because you know they were using the word Joy Con in the charity. Absolutely ridiculous. Overall, Nintendo needs to change your heart, and they really need to do it because it's really bad when you have so many events next to each other that have you being awful towards your fans that's i think the big picture here like nintendo needs to improve their relationship with fans and only way they can do it is by you know letting these people do what they got do what they can especially right now like come on it that was the only way they could do it online just let them do it just let them do it just because you might have the right to do it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do game highlight for this video is this very special game called Nosia. Now, this is a game that actually came out in Japan on the Vita, I believe, and it got apparently it was pretty big in Japan, especially since it came to Switch because from what I'm hearing it actually was in the top 30 like most downloaded in Japan the in the Japan eShop for a good like 3 to 4 months, so it's a really solid game. One thing I really like about how they showcase this game in the uh, Nindy Direct is the guy that was presenting the game was really, really good at, at explaining exactly what his game was about. I, I really like that. Uh, 
one thing I really enjoy about just developers in general is just when they can describe their game so concisely and enthusiastically, not in a disingenuous way, but in just like, you know, this is what the game is about. This is this, 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 like when they're very, I like it when developers are very uh, straightforward and clear on what exactly the game offers. It's really good. Uh, as far as the game goes, uh, it's a visual novel type game, but it's very unconventional where there'll be all these different characters and out of all these characters, there'll be these things called the Nosia that are going to be acting like the real characters. And you got to kind of whittle out each character to see which one is a, a Nosia, which is like, I guess is like an alien or something like that. And you got to pick out which one is the Nosia. And if you don't pick them out, then the Nosia wins. And it seems like the longer you take, the more the Nosia will start killing off all the characters or making them disappear. So you really have to be quick if you want to see everybody survive. It's crazy. And you could set it up to the point where there won't even be just one Nosia. There could be multiples as well if you want. Just make the game even more interesting. That and apparently each playthrough only takes like 5 to 15 minutes. But definitely check this game out. I'll leave the link to the trailer in the description. So yeah, that's it for this gaming news. A lot of bullshit, <laughs> to put it frank, we discussed in this video. I hope everybody enjoys their Christmas and New Year. This is probably me, I don't know, maybe the last video for this year. I'm not sure. I'll try to get maybe one more up, but we'll see how that goes. Just, I, I'm honestly just ready for this year to be done with because I absolutely hated uh, 2020. It was pretty much awful on every single front. It, Yeah. Didn't want to end this on a, on a negative note, but fuck me, man. It's, Anybody, if anybody says 2020 was a great year for them, they're they're straight up lying, man. <laughs> There's no way. But, anyways, that's all from me. I'll see you guys next time. Makes a game like this because it's like, it's like, oh, shit. <laughs>